The ninth video on analysis is a tutorial sheet on steady state and system gain. This tutorial is going to assume that students have viewed and understood the earlier videos in this analysis series. And we're going to give you a number of tutorial questions to test whether you can do it by yourself. The key thing we want you to do is first read the questions and then pause the videos. Please attempt to answer the questions by yourself before you continue the video and view the answers provided. Now some background, things that we've covered but we might use in this particular video. So first the final value theorem, which can be applied to a signal and that's given as the limit as t goes to infinity of f of t equals the limit as s goes to zero of s f of s, where f of s is the Laplace transform of f of t. What do we mean when we talk about a transfer function? Well, the output of a transfer function y of s is the transfer function g of s times the input u of s. And finally, what's the steady state of a system output when the input is a step? And we're going to call this the unit step response. So we're talking about this particular identity here. And the answer is the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t is just g of zero. So those are three results we're going to use and have been covered in the earlier videos. Question one then. A system output is determined from the following relationship, y equals g times u. We're going to assume u of s obviously is Laplace of u of t, and we want you to find the corresponding steady state output, i.e. Um, y of t, or the limit of y of t, as t goes to infinity. And you can see there are four questions here. What we want you to do now is pause this video and attempt those. <coughs> and I will now continue and go through some possible solutions. If we look at the top left then, first example, we've got g of s equals 5 over s plus 1 and u of t equals 2. And you remember, I won't write this every time, but we, we, we said that the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t is g of 0 and that was for a unit step. Now in this particular case what you'll notice is that u is 2, it's not 1. So what we're going to get is g of 0 equals 5 and therefore g of 0 times 2 equals 10 and so the answer to this first one is the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t will be 10. What about the second one? Now, first of all, you only get a steady state output. So you get a non-zero steady state y of t if and only if u of t um, is not equal to zero. Um, and that's in the steady state. So I'm being a bit cryptic here just to emphasize the point. Why is that relevant? Because if you look at this particular u of t, you'll notice part of it is an e to the minus 4t, and that goes to zero. And therefore, that is going to play no part in the steady state calculations. So I can ignore it. So what do we get left with? We get left with g of zero equals 0.2 divided by 0.1 times 4 and then you'll notice that the magnitude of the input was 6 so you'll find that the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t equals now 0.2 over 0.1 is 2, 2 over 4 is a half so we're going to get 6 over 2 or 3. <laughs> Next one then. Now for this first question, I'm going to look at this u of t. It's sinusoid. And you'll see u of t does not settle. Therefore, no limit for y of t. So you might call that a trick question. It's basically asking you to spot that you cannot give an asymptotic value for y of t because the input is oscillating. What about the second one? Well, the second one, you look here and you say, this converges 
to 0 and then you look at this signal here and t e to the minus 3t also converges to 0 and therefore the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t equals 0. By the way, I've taken it for granted that the g of s have stable dynamics, which you can see for yourself if you check the pole positions. Next question. So you see, this is just like the previous question, except with some different numbers. So what you can do now is pause the video at this point, uh, try these questions, and I will now go through the solutions. First, look at this one on the left. What do you notice? Well, what jumps out at you is this minus sign. So g of s is unstable. And therefore, y of t does not converge. Not in general. Not in the open loop anyway. Therefore, no steady state. So that one was very easy to answer. I didn't have to do any algebra at all. What about the next one? Well, if you look at this one, if you look at the pole polynomial, and in particular, look at this bit here, s cubed plus s squared plus s plus 4. This has right half plane roots. Now that might not be obvious to you, but you'll see it is covered in the uh, relevant part of the video series. Um, but either way, you could go on MATLAB if you weren't sure and prove it to yourself. And therefore, again, no convergence. Next one. Now, this is just a test whether you can think by yourself. What you'll notice is the g of s includes an integrator. And therefore, if you were to put a step into a system with an integrator, then the output would diverge. But I'm putting in a u of t, which converges to 0. So I'm going to have to go back to the original formula, which said that the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t equals the limit as s goes to 0 of s y of s. Just to make sure I don't make a silly mistake. And I'm going to plug in the numbers. So s y of s equals s times 3 over s s squared plus 4s plus 4 into s plus 2. And then I need to know what's the Laplace of u of t. So let's put that up here as a note. Laplace of u of t equals 1 over s plus 2. So I've got to multiply that onto the g of s to get y of s. So there we go. And what we're going to do now is do the limit as s goes to 0. So let's cross all the s's. Those two cancel. Those two can be ignored because they're in a brackets with a 4. That can be ignored because it's in a brackets with a 2. That can be ignored because it's in a brackets with a 2. And so you get left with 3 over 4 times 2 times 2, which is 3 over 16. OK, next question. Find the steady state gain of the following transfer functions. So this question is about steady state gain. Um, and you'll remember that we told you in the second slide this is usually given as g of 0. I say usually, but there's some checks we need to do. So pause the video now while you have a look at these, and I will go on with the solutions. All right, with this first one, there's no tricks. This bit is stable, and so is this bit. And therefore, I can go ahead and use my formula g of 0. So what I get is 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.1 times 4. I'm not going to resolve that any in any more detail, because I'm sure you can do that yourself. The next one, I look, and I can see this has got left half plane roots. This has got left half plane roots. However, here we have an integrator. And so the steady state gain is infinite. So if a system has an integrator, the steady state gain 
is infinite. And that's quite an important property that you will have noticed discussed when you get to feedback. All right, next two. Now this one, you'll notice, has got left half, sorry, write it correctly, right half plane roots. At least one, it might only be one, and you can tell that because of that minus sign. And therefore, steady state gain is not helpful um, in terms of finding the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t. Now, in fact, there are situations where you can use this steady state gain, but you would need to know that the input to this g of s cancelled any of those right half plane roots, and that's way beyond the remit of this particular video. So what, what, what we want you to notice is it's got right half plane roots, so if you're talking about open loop responses just sticking in an input, you would expect the output to go to infinity. And therefore, talking about steady state gain is not helpful. And this last one over here, there's no particular tricks. You can see two quadratic factors, positive co coefficients. Therefore, it's stable. So g of 0 can be written as 2 times 4 times 1 divided by 2 times 4, which is going to give you just 1. So in summary, we've given some tutorial questions on determining steady state system outputs for systems with and without integrators. And we've also looked at the concept of system gain.